you're not lazy, you have chronic cardiopulmonary syndrome. It's a full-time job. This is a presentation on energy conservation techniques. I'm Amanda Proctor. I'm a res respiratory therapist and a fellow CES warrior for 10 years and counting. CES can make you feel useless and lack of purpose. in life and just generally lost. Today we're going to talk about some ways that may improve your ability to lessen fatigue and to be able to do the things you want to do and all of those things you need to do or at least most of them. We're going to talk about what is chronic cardiac syndrome and how does it drain the life right out of you. What is energy conservation and how can it help? How can I use it to increase my energy reserves? How can I become more helpful in my home without feeling bored afterwards? And what do you mean I can have energy to leave the house and enjoy myself? I can travel and not fall, fall over from it. No promises, but these techniques I've learned from research and many years in occupational therapy, and I'm gonna share them with you. So chronic cardiocrina syndrome is CES symptoms that last longer than your expected recovery or that last longer than six months after your diagnosis. Chronic CES, it has no cure and there is no standardized treatment yet. Living with chronic cardiocrina syndrome is a full-time job and it's exhausting. It is 24 seven, no breaks, no time off, and basically your world revolves around it. It's emotionally draining, body beating, back breaking, and a frustrating job. And you don't get compensation. It's actually kind of expensive to live with this disease, uh, let alone fighting constantly to get the basic things that you need to do the job of living with this, everything is a fight. Your body is fighting you to move, even just to lay in bed, it fights you. You have to fight to get everything you need. And even then, that doesn't always happen in your favor. You have to constantly go to the doctor, and many times they just don't get it, or they don't know how to help. There is no current guidance for them. So it's trial and error. One of the most common questions I get asked is, how do I do what I do and where do I find the energy? Believe me, I have my days where I just erase my calendar and go to sleep all day. Uh, that's just part of this. I rest, I recover, and I bounce back. I use energy conservation as much as possible. So I literally schedule naps. <laughs> Sometimes my naps are unscheduled, but I don't fight them because I never win anyways. So just take the nap. I take breaks both mentally and physically. And I usually do foundation stuff in my jammies laying on the couch my bed, in the office, or recliner. I don't actually have a real office chair because, well, I have CES. I can't sit with it anyways. While I am overweight, I'm working with a nutritionist to lose weight. I can tell I have more energy since I'm eating better. And finally, I'm stubborn and a natural fighter. I always have been. My favorite song is Fight Song by... Rachel Platten, and I just want to read you this one lyric um, from the song because I think it will describe me and the fight that CES is. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a heart open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion. 
This is my fight song, take back my life song, prove I'm all right song, my power's turned on. Starting right now, I'll be strong. I'll play my fight song, and I don't really care if anybody else believes, because I've still got a lot of fight left in me. And just this picture at the bottom of me standing on the mountain, um, that was my first hike, something I enjoyed doing pre-CES after I learned how to walk. And it was a four and a half mile hike round trip with a 720 foot elevation increase. And that was my first view of the Pacific Ocean ever. And yeah, I'm totally crying in that picture. And when we made it back to the car, the devices on my legs, they are electronic and I can answer questions about them and chat, but Basically, the batteries died by the time I made it back to the car, and I could no longer walk. I couldn't walk for like a day and a half after that, but totally worth it. But when we got in the car, this song came on. And me and my husband both were crying like babies, and it's been my song since. So find your fight, find your song, play it often. So what is energy conservation? Uh, it allows you to have energy left over to do the things you want to do instead of drowning in the things you have to do and maybe not even accomplishing all of that. Energy conservation is specific behavioral tasks and strategies to manage fatigue associated with chronic disease. It's tra training is learning energy conservation training is learning specific behavior strategies to manage fatigue, such as task prioritization and delegation, nutrition and sleep hygiene, just to name a few. I'm gonna focus on things I learned in my experience with CES and energy conservation. If you wanna learn more about this, you can talk to your doctor about seeing an occupational therapist that specializes in energy conservation programs. This is very important, so please memorize this slide. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, okay? And one of my aunts always told me growing up, if you play, you pay. That is so true with CES. So, you know, this is all about having energy left over to do the things you want to do. So. Again, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So there's only so much you can give in a day. Like, just because I can stand doesn't mean I will. Um, I, I can do it, but it's complicated. I have limitations. There's stipulations. If this, then that. Um, but can I do it? Yeah. Does it cost me? Yes. It hurts. After about 10 to 20 minutes, it takes a lot out of me to stand. So I sit whenever I can to save energy for later. Can I walk? Yes. After a hard battle, yes, I can walk. But while I've been able to walk for miles before with breaks, <laughs> I've regressed due to complications and recent bed rest and ho hospitalization. I'm currently rebuilding my endurance. If I use assistive devices, I can walk further, longer. If I don't, it's short distances and I risk falling, which my doctors yell at me for. Walking is a huge energy expenditure for me. And if I want to have a good time, I use mobility aids like either scooters, walkers, and lots of brakes. Can I sit? Of course. But as many as of you know firsthand, it hurts. And pain, it takes a lot out of you. And it's a distraction, so you aren't really all there in the moment. So I have ways around this that I try to make it more comfortable or avoid it and lay reclined. 
what do these things cost me? I will tell you that just rolling out of bed costs me energy as it's not easy for me to roll over and sit up. In fact, my dog helps me sit up in bed. Um, I start using energy from the very second I get up and hopefully I'm not in an energy deficit from the day before. So standing for 20 minutes, I have to rest for at least 40 minutes. Um, walking for 30 minutes, I have to rest for a good two hours. When I say rest, I don't mean like sit and rest. I mean full on laid out rest, like in bed resting. Um, sitting for 30 minutes, hour and a half, because it hurts to sit. And now I have to worry about pain medication and heating pads and ice or whatever I need to do to stop hurting. A light housework for 20 minutes. I need to rest for an hour. And guys, this is with taking breaks, okay? So, um, errands for two hours. Um, yeah, that cost me a lot. And that's a good four hours of rest. If I travel for a full day, like if I have to fly anywhere, and I mean anywhere, no matter how short that flight is, the rest of the day, I'm not doing anything. So what can you do to get more energy stored up? Um, get quality sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's definitely easier said than done, but make sure you view my lecture on CES and sleep for tips on better quality sleep. Your cells need energy to function properly. They also need water, so make sure you're eating nutritious foods. Limit your carbs. This is particularly true for those with COPD, lung diseases, sleep disorders, heart disease, and diabetes. And go with good proteins. I eat a lot of soy, beans, cheese, almond milk, etc. I'm mostly a vegetarian. I do eat some meat, but Primarily, that's my sources of protein. Talk to your doctor about a consultation with a nutritionist and ask them what your fluid intake should be. And at least two thirds of that should be water, not soda, not caffeinated drinks, water. Take regular breaks. I've mentioned this before. Break up your task, plan out your day according to energy spent doing things. Prioritize your task by importance. Do the hardest things before your longest break or nap. Now, every task is physically draining. Some of them are emotionally draining. Like any time I have to talk to insurance, I just need a mental break from the world after I have to do that. I take naps almost daily, and sometimes they're not even by choice. I'll be doing something and then just kind of wake up and be like, oh, it's nighttime outside. What happened? Um, try to plan for surprises, an impromptu trip to the doctor, your kid calling you to come get them from school because they're sick. This is why breaks are important. Um, pushing through will not allow you to have that energy restored. To deal with life's curveballs. So if you're taking regular breaks, you're restoring that energy or regaining some of that energy back. So if you get that phone call, you're more readily able to deal with it. This is just an example of a day I had recently. Yeah, and I know it looks like I do a lot, but if you'll notice, a lot of this is like get dressed, eat breakfast, do stretches, get organized and plan my day, take lunch, rest, take my meds, take a nap. Um, you know, most of this is resting <laughs> and breaking up my day. Um, so then I have my, don't forget to do these things. It's important. Um, and then priorities, you know, things that I need to do these things to be able to take care of myself or my home or my family. Keep organized. 
stay organized. I'm still working on this. It's a slow process of trial and error. You think something might work better than it does, and then it doesn't work. Then you have to wait for somebody to help you or until you have the energy to do it yourself, to rearrange or reorganize something. So keep the things you use the most easily accessible. I moved my pots and pans to the pantry so that I didn't have to bend over and get them. Um, I moved my clothes to waist high, and they're not in a dresser anymore. They're all in the closet. That way I could more easily get them out of baskets and some little cupboards we got from Ikea. Um, get creative in how you organize your space. Um, use organizers, use inserts, make it easy on yourself to find things you need. Um, use your assistive devices. There are so many out there. Ask your doctor to consult with an occupational therapist to help you overcome barriers to things you have trouble with in and outside of the home. Um, they're pretty creative. So things that I do, I place grabber sticks in every room of my house. I don't want to have to walk across the house and spend that energy to pick something up off the floor when I can just walk to the corner of that room. Um, you know, use a shower chair, even if you don't, quote, need it. You know, that's energy of standing, plus you have to bathe yourself, and just it takes a lot more energy to take that shower standing up than it would if you were sitting. Pull a chair to the counter and the stove to prep and cook. Use a stair climber. Uh, to carry things up and down the stairs. And I'll, I have a picture of that for later to show you what it is. Use a timer, especially when you're learning to take breaks. 15 minutes, take a break. 15 minutes, take a break. And, I, and I'm, I'm really serious about that. Um, break up your tasks into 15-minute chunks. Do a quick meditation, whatever you need to do. but take a break. You don't have to push through and drain all of your energy on one thing so you can't do anything the rest of the day. So a lot of people don't know this, but you can rent mobility scooters. Like I use a manual wheelchair for the most part because that's exercise for me. But if I'm going to be out all day, I will rent a scooter. It might be 15 to $20 for the day, but that's worth it to be able to be out all day. Like if I want to go to an amusement park with family or something, I can't keep up with them unless I'm in the scooter. So um, they'll also usually deliver it to your hotel or airport or wherever you're going. Um, they usually have other things you can rent to like shower chairs and even vehicles that are accessible to wheelchairs and things like that. Um, this is closet I was talking about. Everything is literally that I need is actually here to this drawer here. It's that's where it is. Um, so reorganize your space and you know sit at the stove. You know make sure you're saving energy to do the things you want to do. This is that stair climber I was telling you about. Um, get creative. It can be fun for your family to get involved in problem solving so that you can enjoy your time out together more. Um, bungee cords are a pretty cheap resource to have on hand to bungee things to things like, um, especially things like the uh, stair climber, um, you know, shopping bags, things like that. Um, you know, I use, um, they're also a pretty cheap resource. Um, the stair climber can also be used for carrying laundry or anything you need up and down the stairs if you have stairs in your home. This one has a seat on it. Um, it's the first one I've seen with a seat on it. Uh, so I put that in my wish list on Amazon. Um, stroller straps, uh, they're good for carrying bags. 
um, particularly if you're out shopping. Um, you can also tie your uh, you can also tie your grabber stick to the stroller straps and and that will allow you to have your grabber stick readily available so you don't have to bend over if you drop something. Compression socks can relieve leg fatigue and prevent or minimize swelling. Talk to your daughter, your, sorry, your doctor about that. Um, I use multiple assistive devices. These are just two of the many that I have. Um, depending on where I'm going, what I'm doing. If you can bring a seat with you, do it. Um, I've been known to make things into a chair that aren't actually chairs like <laughs> tables, um, sidewalk curves, planters, stairs. <laughs> um, I carry a small backpack with me pretty much everywhere I go, and that actually has water in it. It's one of those camel packs. But it also has a compartment in it where I have my medications, my catheters, and other minimal uh, necessities that I need on my day out. Um, make sure that you're wearing either a hat or sunscreen when outside. Remember that many of our medications make us sens more sensitive and susceptible to sunburn. And I also wear neck fans when I'm outdoors and I get overheated easily. And those misters with the fan on them are also great. Um, they can hang around your neck and keep you cool. So energy saving travel tips. Most travel companies have a disability line. All of the airlines do and it's really helpful. Many times I've been upgraded on my seat to accommodate my needs. So if you call that disability hotline, you may end up with a free upgrade. Uh, they also make sure that you have someone available to push you around the airport, get food, go to the bathroom. They usually expect a tip, but if you can't tip them, just make sure to thank them. So I also make a list of what I need to travel with about two weeks before I go. Stay organized and keep that list for every time you travel because you may just need to update it instead of change it completely. Make sure your name and contact information is on any medical device that you have in case it gets lost. Also, I start packing in spurts at least a week before I leave, sometimes longer, depending on how much I have to pack. Packing takes a lot out of me. And having to do it in one single day and then travel the next day, uh, no, bad idea. Don't do it. Don't recommend it at all. Start packing early. Do it a little bit at a time. Grab a shirt, put it in the bag. Next day, grab two shirts, put it in the bag. Keep a go bag. This is a bag that's handy if you have an emergency and need to grab and go. If there's a natural disaster and you need to go. Or if you need to go to the hospital or ER, keep a list of your meds and doctor's contact information in it, as well as some of your meds clearly labeled, especially controlled substances. Keep catheters, lubricants, gloves, change of clothes, adult disposable underwear products, warm, stock, warm socks rubber, with rubber soles, pajamas, chargers, and anything else you think you might need in a hurry. By the way, this is your medical go bag, not your emergency preparedness go bag. For, mission, for information on that, refer to the CDC or your national emergency preparedness information line. Plane travel. I already mentioned calling the disability line for accommodations. Use the wheelchair service whenever possible. It will save energy. And even using that, it still takes a lot out of you. 
Use the restroom about an hour before your flight departs because your flight will board you about 30 to 40 minutes before departure. Board with those with disabilities needing extra time. Ask for a water bottle from the attendant when you board and let the flight attendant know you have medical issues that you may need to take medication for and they'll just check on you more often throughout the flight to see if you need a drink. Take an aisle seat so you don't have to climb over people to go to the restroom. If you can get a comfort plus seat or business class or first class, do it. It's more like room, more room, more comfortable. Do not book yourself in the exit row. You cannot legally sit there. You have to be willing and physically able to help in an emergency. If it's a long flight, consider a layover. Is it right for you? Do not make plans for the next day after traveling unless you're feeling really lucky. Make that a sightseeing day. Bring your seat cushion, neck pillow, earphones, and meds with you on your person. If you're traveling by train, it's basically the same. Um, use the restroom 30 minutes before the train departs. Board as early as possible to give yourself extra time. Bring water with you and meals may or may not be served or they may be in a restaurant car, which may or may not be easily accessible to you. So bring something to eat with you. Stay hydrated when you're traveling. If you can travel with a buddy, if it's an overnight ride, book a cabin if you're able to. If not, get a Comfort Plus seat or Business First Class if you can. Do not book yourself on connecting trains too close together. You may not make the connecting. Same with airplanes. Eat a snack or bring packaged meal with you. Don't make plans for the next day after travel. And again, bring your seat cushion and all your comfort items. If you're traveling by ship, again, use their accommodation line. Use their wheelchair service for boarding and disembarking. Consider renting a mobility scooter. You can rent them through the cruise line. They're more expensive. Or you can rent one and have it delivered to the terminal. I would suggest getting the smallest you can get as some of the corners are a little tight to turn. As soon as you board, start making your way to the muster station so you know where it is. People with special needs usually have a special muster station. Find out where that is and go there. Stay hydrated and consider a cup holder or a necklace holder for your drink so you can have your hands free. Travel with a buddy that knows your health needs if possible. AD, ADA rooms are very limited on cruise ships. Book early or ask for an upgrade if they don't have any left. Ask for a shower chair to be delivered to your room. Understand if you can do an excursion before booking it as you may not get a refund. Bring snacks off the ship with you and have water in the room for your meds and hydration. Remember to rest and take breaks, and remember sunscreen and a hat. Remember those meds can make us more susceptible to sunburn. Road trips. Not as exciting as it was in my early 20s before CES, but the destination is the key. Plan your trip out around bathroom breaks, stretching, and know how long you can be in a car before stopping for the night or even stopping for a break. Bring snacks and have water in the car for meds and hydration. Remember to rest and take breaks. If the car has a plug-in available, bring a heating pod. Consider renting a mobility scooter when you arrive to your destination to save cargo space. Bring your normal comfort items. Add an eye mask as, you know, you can't necessarily block out the sun. Bring games, books, hobby materials. If you're alone, be careful with your medications and driving. Know when to stop. Know when to switch drivers if you're carpooling. Travel with people that understand your needs. 
Book ADA rooms ahead of time if possible. Ask for extra pillows and a shower chair. And pack an inflatable leg wedge to save room. For events, if you're hosting, see the slide. Um, plan ahead, make to-do lists, start early, stay organized. Order of operations matter. Do a little at a time. Make sure you delegate. Ask for help. Tell people to get there early and designate them your helpers. Make it fun. Have your kids help you. Buy pre-diced ingredients or pre-prepared ingredients if possible. Use a chair again to prep and cook. Clean as you go. Use parchment paper for easy cleanup. Use disposable trays and cookware. Use minimalistic decor and order pre-made trays and food whenever possible. If you're attending and not the host, call the host and ask if there's a place you can lay down for a few minutes and a comfortable place that can be designated for you to sit. If you're not comfortable doing that, and it is not a surprise party, call the guest of honor and ask them to do it on your behalf. You have to get comfortable expressing your needs and asking for help. And it's hard, but I will tell you that once I started doing it, I realized that people, even people I didn't know, including perfect strangers, were really happy to help, and you could tell that it made them feel good to be able to help you. You are not a burden, you are beautiful, and you're worth it. Thank you for, sh for listening to this lecture on energy conservation. If you have any tips or tricks for energy conservation, you want to share them with us, you can go to ceslife.org and let us know and we can pass them along. Thank you.